How's the tree situation? Uh, it's it's interesting. Uh, we've had a we've had our a report back, and we've got to get rid of one of the trees, at least one this year, yeah. maybe the next year. But uh, the 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 tree surgeon, who's a friend of the people in the street, um, he, he's. He just says, yeah, look, I mean, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's got all these qualifications. He's very professional. And if he's saying that's what you've got to do, that's what you've got to do. So um, the fact that he, he knows and that he knows other people in the street, I think they're the ringleaders. Um, maybe it'll filter back. And uh, But, yeah, there's, now it's very straightforward, I think, because we've got all the evidence really, you know, in this. 60 page report we have back is incredibly thorough um arboriculturalist uh and he's and he's also a charming man he's uh, he's, he's delightful so we we just now need somebody to come and cut it down so we're asking for questions but It's just one of the small trials of moving into a new town. They eh? come in and draw, destroy their environment for them. Mm -hmm. You're upsetting it. Yeah. yeah. We are. We are upset. We are making change, as you say. Uh, yeah. And just your presence is changing. There's nothing. Well, they don't know really because, I mean, people say, "Oh, we knew the lady who was lit in here," but we never went into a house or we never chatted much and so I think there's some and because it's lockdown I'm not sure that people know very much except for our sort of immediate neighbors about the changes so I don't know but it's it is nice here uh, I just wish it would warm up a bit it's uh I, f I forget how cold it gets in the UK. <laughs> it reminds me of my very first uh, visit to to the UK, to London, to visit my sister who was an au pair, and I was about 11 or so. And um, we were in this drafty um, um, hotel room in, in, in London. I never had seen sash windows in my life before. That's not what we do in Germany. <laughs> and this thing, the, the wind was whistling through, and obviously single place. And um, and this these little tucked in bed sheets with an old woolly blanket on top of them. Like, these people, I don't know. <laughs> They're poor here. They're poor. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. The, the radiator's not quite making it. I remember that so well. It's very cold. Yeah, is it's it, in, in in Italy, where you, I mean, that the radiators usually are undersized in Italy. Well, we had a, a wood burner, and uh, right. um, and that. We, oh, we had two houses in Italy, the big one. We never stayed in the big one in the winter, because we'd go across there during the day to work in the garden, but but we have we still have this little house and it's only it's about three meters wide and ten meters long and three stories high and and it and it's it's in the middle of uh, the old town so it's got houses on both sides the long side so it's only got a very small area to the outside and that it was double glazed and well it still is double glazed and it's got central heating and wood burner so it was not hard. It's no. not hard to make it toasty, you know, so you can... That sounds cozy. Yeah, it is very cozy. I mean, it's a bit boring because if there's snow outside, you can't do anything, and it's a tiny house. But, no, it was certainly warm. You could um, warm it up quick. So that was never a problem. So, yeah, I mean, I, even though... You, I'm just not used to being... And in London, I mean, the flat was incredibly hot because we had people on both, well, you know, people on both sides and people below as well. So, I mean, it was just, 
we didn't hardly hardly have to use this ventilating. So I'm just a bit. It's it's a new experience. Well, it's a sort of remembered experience. But um, anyway, how are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Full week, but um, um, you've been busy this week. You've not been able to make no, things. Yeah. Well, it was John's birthday, and I ah. didn't know how it would turn out. Right. And there was a possibility that he would be away anyway, so I didn't quite know how it how it would be. Right. But in the event, I just couldn't. Well, I didn't want to just you know even sitting there. Not much else going on. <laughs> Um, so I thought that was fair. So it wasn't, um, it was a busy week, but not that, that wasn't a busy Well, I'm, I missed last Saturday uh, because ah. for once it was really sunny outside and I thought, oh, sod this, I'm going to go outside because it was just so nice. So um, I forego the, but I went to you the... Then, oh, did you watch it afterwards? I watched it afterwards, well, I listened to it. Um, and then I, uh, I went to the th thing on Tuesday, oh, yeah. um, which actually was really interesting okay. because I think it was because somebody was absent <laughs> and it wasn't you, <laughs> it wasn't you that it was, uh, Sean wasn't there uh -huh. uh, at the beginning. He was driving there and the discussion was more uh sort of generic it was more open about other other it was a broader discussion it was less buddhist and then when sean came in um it sort of went it went back to the more uh traditional buddhist terms terminology so I'm wondering whether it's actually um, to do with the dynamics of the group and that there's more possibility to open things up. Um, and I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, so I'm going to, I'm, I'll be thinking about that next time. I mean, I, and also I wasn't tired. I was fine. I was, I was sort of, I know, I was being, I was in a jolly mood. So it was quite, I was feeling different, but I also think that, well, that would made it uh, slightly different because it was, no, it was noticeable when Sean came in. I mean, he's, he's lovely, but he's, he, he immediately refers the conversation back to Stephen and Buddhism things, which sort of, rather than taking it, into a broader realm. So I think there's some, sometimes it can be Buddhist, secular Buddhism, and sometimes it could be secular Buddhism and the rest of the world it could be angled in different ways, the conversation. And I think it's, just, it's one of those things where you sort of find your feet with people. You sort of, you just and I've, it's this difficulty I have is not knowing people, not being able to chat to people, then not being able to find a relationship um, as a starting point. But it was, I, it was interesting, and and Viv Anderson in the group turns out that she was a colleague of mine uh, when I was a lecturer in teacher education, and on the same campus. At, in Lynn's. Amazing. and she's amazing it was <laughs> she still lives there and uh i couldn't i i she she much she remembered my first name oddly and uh, she said oh i wonder if it's the same rupert and uh, but she we don't think we'd met um because it was quite a, you know it's quite a big university so but we were yeah we were on the and and presumably we were there at the same time because we're of an age, I think. Anyway, good morning, Gary. Uh, yes, uh, good, good evening. <laughs> Sorry, good evening, yes, silly, silly of me. <laughs> How are you? Um, oh, good question. Um, <laughs> very, very complicated. Um, 
fact, yes, yes. Um, I'm sort of in negotiations with uh, uh, the uh, the drug squad in Jakarta. Whoa! We're trying to, we're trying to close down my little um, biotech supplements company on the basis yes. that I that I don't have a permit. And they're asking for uh, approximately one hundred thousand dollars. Uh, what? For, to let them to let me off selling basically a food stuff so that's what i've been doing well wow. and how's it going oh great <laughs> uh, are you winning for me but no no <laughs> well we'll see but it, this is uh it's been going on for a few weeks and this i might add is just one of many things which are happening yeah. <clears throat> But uh, yes, yeah, sort of developed today where they're sort of trying to make the final offers to sort of pay them off. Um, and uh, so I've got to decide fairly soon whether or not to um, take it to the Anti-Corruption Commission or just sort of try and let them off the hook gently because they've made a, a bit of a miscalculation. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you say let you off the hook, I mean they are prosecuting or they just want you to have a permit and that you need to buy that and then you can carry on. Or they have yeah, actually yeah. accused you of something and and that money is for not prosecuting you further. Okay, well, well the, the the modus operandi in Indonesia is to find a law that someone breaks and sort of twist it and uh, uh, somewhat until something fits, you know, <laughs> or something you can make look like it fits, or, or something you can scare people enough that they're convinced that maybe they did do something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's, you know, the, the basic tactic. Um, so yes, yeah, nothing new, uh, but I think they miscalculated just because they don't really know their science and don't know what I'm selling is basically just a fraction of, of coconut oil. So it's uh, they think I'm selling pharmaceuticals, you see, yeah. which, is the white, which is how they justified using the drug squad. Uh, they, you know, they had the big raid and everything like that. And Blimey. It was quite, it was quite obvious in uh, you know, a setup right from the start, uh, but um, I just don't know why I've got the energy to sort of go through uh, an anti-corruption thing again. The last time I did that was in uh, 2005, when, when I when eventually, the, as a result of my report, the head of the Indonesian Investment Board went to jail for four years. Blimey. So, which did my reputation a lot of good. Yeah, well, they, uh, they should have done their research this last lot. Well, yeah, well, that's the problem. You see, when, when, when I did this in 2005, uh, the word Okusi sort of, you know, my company just sort of went like a, like a, uh, like a cancer through, through all, through all the, uh, the bureaucracy, especially immigration and uh, uh, the investment board, which are sort of key sort of uh, departments that are involved with uh, foreigners. And so, you know, the, the easy targets. But the problem, and so, yeah, the, the bureaucracy sort of actually, you know, gave us a, a good birth for, for um, quite a few years. And, I, and even kind of coming to outposts, you know, people would be whispering, oh, that's that's a pussy. You know, they knew what happened in Jakarta. Um, so, because the, the whole in, immigration investigation team, uh, uh, team in, in Jakarta was completely disbanded as, as a result because you know, they tried to deport and try to get rid of me so I couldn't uh, keep making complaints and that backfired badly. <laughs> a shouting match with the Director General of Immigration in the halls, uh, that's not the done thing in Indonesia. That's not the sort of thing you could expect to get away with, but I did. So, but, but unfortunately that memory, <laughs> no, it's been sort of 15 years now, so that memory has faded, I guess, and, and they've, got, they've got the new blokes who you know, haven't heard that I'm a bit difficult. 
So, but yeah, but, but it sort of comes back to, you know, do I really want to do all this? It's just, so, I just don't have the energy for it. That's the problem. Um, so that, mm. But anyway, but that's just one of many problems. So, how have you, you been going? <laughs> I was just saying it's a bit cold here. <laughs> That's that's my problem. So. Okay. You still got snow? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just it's uh, we had we had a couple of nice sunny days and it's got cold again and uh, I, I I forget I very, forget very quickly. But no, it's fine. It'll it'll be it'll be fine. Well, as soon as it's spring, life will be changed. Have you had your vaccination yet? Uh, I have, yes. Um, oh, good. I'm, I've had the first one. Uh, I had to go to Eastbourne, which is about twenty miles away, um, because they don't do one. They don't do them here. But, but yeah, no, that was good. I sneaked in with Lynn. Lynn was because she's a bit older than me, so she was had hers, and uh, I just had my letter. And I said, "Oh, can I come in now?" And they said, "Oh no, you can't come. Even though you've got a letter, you can't come in. Have a jab." Uh, unless you uh, register. So I had to do it all on the phone and I could managed it. And then they just snuck me in. So yeah, I feel, I feel fine now. I feel safe. <laughs> Did you, you go to yours, LP? I'm booked in. Oh. Um, I'm booked in. Oh. Yeah. So it's going to be sometime next week. Your voice is terrible. I can hardly hear you. Yeah, it's, it, it was okay before. Healthy. It was, it was, it was, it's, uh... It sounds like you're underwater. So I've got a bubbly sound and a hissing. No, just the same. It's funny because it, when we were chatting before Gary came, it was fine. Yeah, it was. I, I, I was only hit, only heard you for a few minutes, but uh, yeah, it sounded clearer. Well, if I don't use my headset, you can. No. No, just the same. The same. Ah. Oh no, you've gone completely. No, that's it. Oh, okay. yeah, that's it. Look at that. I actually fixed something. That's a new one. <laughs> so, so I missed the first couple of minutes you may have been talking. So I heard um, uh, Rupert talking about um, interaction with the group and, and things like that and, and the usual problems. And yeah. Well, no, it wasn't. It, was, it was interesting because I, I say I missed last Saturday's session. I, I, I caught up on, on the recording. Um, but in the group meeting, um, Elfie couldn't make it, but um, one of the other um, characters, Sean, uh, wasn't there for the first half an hour. And the conversation was much broader, um, more sort of open, and encapsulated other aspects from a more a broader philosophical perspective. Um, until Sean came back and or Sean arrived and he immediately talked more Buddhist terms or, or related it back to Buddhism. And, and I, so I, I think that's what's been um, maybe constraining the conversation is that somebody is used to talking in a particular way. Mm. And then that either makes people who are familiar with that talk in a, in some familiar terms or those people who are less familiar with it 
not say very much. So it it sort of lends the conversation to those. It's almost like with expertise, you're sort of listening you rather than interrupting people who are talking using a particular language. You sort of sit back a bit. Um, and those people who are familiar with the language join in. Whereas when that wasn't focal point for the conversation it, it, it would opened out a lot more and i think that's that was an interesting for me to see it from that way. no I, I but i was also in a good mood um which i wasn't the week before so it might be something to do with that but i i, I found it quite interesting and i think it's to do with this idea that it's difficult to meet people without being able to have informal conversations, um, without being able to get a, a background, um, a, a sort of a handle on where they are. That must be so boring. You've, now you've dispelled, oh, there you are. You've come back again. Yeah, yeah. You've switched I'm, I'm just sort of switching between my oh, accounts. Now so. I can see you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's nicer. You are, you're yeah. much, you're much healthier now. <laughs> you're a bit dark before. What, what about you, Alfie? What, what, what ex the lecture last week was was um, I, I thought quite interesting and, and revealing. Um, how did you feel about it? Well, I did find some bits really um, uh, interesting, and some bits I lost it completely with it. In a way of I just found myself switching off. It got at some point got very Buddhist and I just I just had no energy in me to engage with it and I not noticed how I was just drifting off and uh, didn't want to know and then there were uh, actually a, a few minutes later there was something really interesting I, I mean from the lectures and um, and it drew me back in but um, so that I, I found that interesting and I didn't take part in any of the breakout groups. I just was not in, in the mood. So I did exactly I, the same. Did you I, too? I, I, I just didn't. And all, all question answer sessions, I just sort of pretty much turned off, um, ah. which, which may not have been. Uh, yeah, That's, I did it, not. It just sort of annoys me, I guess, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, even in, in the course the kind of personal stuff you know for me that, that that's very linked to the to this um uh, what is it that that um the conversation that's very uh, staged the the one the the you know where you oh god you know that that very um formulaic conversation that we were meant to have in in some of the breakout groups and, mm -hmm. and then talk about a very personal matter. So how does that matter for you? And it never brought out the best of me. It, it really, I, 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 I'm not keen on, on that formulaic, uh, for me, totally unnatural uh, stage conversation. Um, and, and when I looked back at what I actually said, I was, I thought that it was just, most often very useless what I said it it led me into a weird uh, complaining mode and and i didn't I didn't care for it it didn't it mm -hmm. didn't do anything for me and um it I think the questions that were posed for what we should uh, do in the breakout groups um, they they sounded a bit like that for me and I was I was tired as well so I didn't mm. so it was a, a weird one I I just uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow and see if I can be more engaged again mm. I was also thinking ah Stephen won't leave the Buddhism behind because he takes his teacherly um, uh, uh, position from it he feels it's the only one, that aspect, not the philosophy, not as a scientist, not as an artist, not as a writer. 
does he give himself um, the uh, the uh, permission to lecture because he hasn't studied any of these things but he so he can only lecture on buddhism he feels and mm-hmm. then he brings those other things in and that's legitimate but he cannot overcome the buddhist terminology he always bounces off that because that i think gives him legitimacy as a teacher mm-hmm. yeah. and and I, I i kind of um lost a bit of energy with that with that notion that i said ah oh, i get you actually he's that's not made up he said that pretty much in one of the 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 courses that he doesn't feel that he has you know he cannot call himself a philosopher he never studied it stuff like that mm-hmm. and so i said ah oh, okay so Buddhism it is, and the 38 watts and stuff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, It has to be like that for him. Cool. Yeah, well, that's a a bit of a a problem where where people think that, you know, I have to have, you know, a qualification in in philosophy in order to speak about philosophy, or I I need to, to have a, you know, a degree in Buddhist studies in order to speak about uh, uh, Buddhism. Um, you know, yeah, I, I guess for me, I, I think many of these foundational elements of, of Dharma, you know, are, are pretty easily revealed by, by you know, by, by the the ancient ancient dynamics, but also by by modern science and and uh, and people's own common sense. Um, so, I you now I really, in terms of of dharma, I think you know I don't have a degree in dharma. I mean, so do I have the right to talk about it? Well, well, yes, I do. And, and I, I think I have the right to, to, to define it and, and to and to engage with it and to and to embrace those elements that I think are dharmic. So yeah, I think that it's a whole um, guru thing, guru thing that sort of comes you know, from the east. And I think you know Stephen and others are you know, a victim of that, and you know it's just unavoidable. Because the whole model of, of you know Eastern Buddhism is is highly structured and uh, you know it, there's everything is sort of traced through lineages and there's there's always always transmission uh, and and there's always this you know reaching back for credibility from 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 pe- previous teacher, teachers so 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 the, so the cult of the teacher I guess you could call it. Is extremely strong in uh, in uh, uh, Buddhism as a religion, and and he he's a perhaps a, you know just his his thoughts have been modelled by that that uh, sort of thinking and that sort of environment. Yeah, I, I I I agree entirely with both of you. I I think I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, I I don't, but I would say Gary, I don't think it's just an Eastern model of of a of a, of a guru i mean i think it, it's that's a western model as well you get experts and experts are bought in and listened to and you pay to listen to experts um and that's what this is somebody who writes lots of books and is respected because of that um that's why people will pay to um be on a course with him uh, so i i'm not sure that it's it's necessarily the, a a Buddhist or religious thing, but I do agree that I, I, I'm sort of surprised <laughs> because what we were saying last week was that maybe that that he that Stephen is doing this because he wants to bring people from a position to a position, but I'm we'll just have to wait and see whether that's the case because at the moment it it doesn't it appears to be. The beginning. Uh, the, the interesting thing, I think, is what you were saying, Gary, about Dharma. This course isn't about Dharma. 
This course is about secular Buddhism. And our course was secular Dharma, I think. Yeah. And, uh, and, ah. mm. and okay. <laughs> because it's Buddhism, <laughs> we've got a lot of Buddhism, secular Buddhism. If it was secular, and I don't think, I think if it was secular Dharma, it wouldn't have 200 people on it. I think so too. And I think that it's it's got that title and that emphasis which is going back to the beginning so from from our point of view i think sort of several years ago mm. and we sort of we, we and i think i think steve <laughs> well he seemed to have moved on from that um mm. and it was as you say it was the dharma and that's what we were talking because the dharma is not exclusively buddhist the dharma is something which is and and stephen was talking about that he was saying you know we should reclaim this word and and he looked for evidence of the word by um other westerners very very specifically because it didn't have the religious context uh not context the religious connotations um because it is a more philosophical, it is more of a, a way of being. Um, and that's, I think, but I, I, just, I just don't know whether where, where it's going to go, whether it's going to go back to the Dharma or whether it's going to be just um, carrying on. Because, But the second semester is called something different, isn't it? It's called um, Ethics of, the, of uh, Uncertainty. Uncertainty. Yeah. And that's the name of, your, of the book. I don't think that's right. the name of the second right. course. Right. I can't remember. No, what, what whatever. Course. I mean, it's obviously, it, there are two sections to this. There is one which yeah. is the, the where we are now, which is sort of where we used to be, and the other one, which is, I'm assuming, him breaking new ground, because it's certainly not what we're doing at the moment. No. But I do think it's it's difficult because the f what we had on our course was breakout groups, which then fed back to the, the whole of the group. And so discussions came from, or points came from the group. We had, I mean, there wasn't enough of that, but but they were very important where people would summarize what a group had been talking about and then feed that back to to everybody in a in a plenary now that's not happening here we have our breakout groups and then we just have questions but the questions are not necessarily related to any of the discussion so the discussion in the breakout groups is is a dead end they they're just for and the questions that are being posed are not necessarily related to what's just been um, discussed in the or in the um, in the in the lecture mm. so um it's a it looks to me like a very like a constructed course it looks to me very much like this is what we do now that's what they're going to get and that's what's going to happen next and because of the q and a system rather than a plenary we're getting more of what you're saying gary about the guru we're getting questions to stephen we're asking the oracle and the oracle is telling us the answer and that's not a discussion that's not taking anything forward that can only be asking somebody their opinion of something and that can't you can't take things forward because you're not opening things up. You're just saying, I need the answer to this question. Can you give it to me? And then, yes, here, here's the answer. So I think it's the structure of the way this course is that is part of the problem, but also the fact that it's called secular Buddhism. And that's, and, and, you know, that's what people have come for. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think, well, I, I sort of, or we talked about the problem of groups and uh, and this course and, and I think it's what I suspected was going to happen has pretty much already happened and that is that the groups uh, have become become incoherent uh, just because they're too mixed up 
and uh, that there's no ability to actually understand individuals' frameworks. Um, and so any sort of development of, of a vocabulary or, or discussion is always cut short because you're sort of moved to a new group, moved to a new group. Mm. And it's just, you know, I just can't see the point in that. Uh, you need continuity. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and that, that was the, the thing that I was afraid that would happen and that it appears yeah. it has. Uh, I don't know if there's technical problems in doing it any other way. There may or may not be, I don't know. Um, but certainly I think if it continues like this, um, I might sort of make some suggestions to them that uh, perhaps the groups be stabilized a little bit more yeah. uh, in order that uh, more meaningful discussions can happen. Yeah. Or even if you sort of had sort of stable groups and circulated one person out of them every <laughs> uh, every time you had a discussion, just to sort of a bit of randomness. But, you know, you still need that core of people who you're, who you're familiar with and who you can develop discourses uh, and vocabularies that, that uh, you, you, you can all understand. Uh, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how much they'll listen to me if I told them. Uh, yeah. I think that's also why I just couldn't face it, you know, because i had done that for the first couple of courses and then you meet these completely new people don't know them from Adam everyone says something for five minutes and then you never see them again and um, particularly in the first there were some interesting people on in my in the very first group but I won't ever see them again that's very frustrating and I would have and and then there you know then at other times it, it clearly didn't didn't develop into something so I, I, well, it's it's a, a very st strange. I, I find myself not being able to care, uh, to to kind of engage with another group and another group of people I don't know and won't ever see again. And then talking about my personal stuff, I just I think not. You know, <laughs> that is just that was like, oh no. <laughs> it's like meeting strangers on a on a railway platform. <laughs> <you know. laughs> yeah, yeah, I think um I So it's... it would would it be better? If we were to just be in our study groups, at least that, you know, so that the study group would meet in between as well, so that that group is further, you know, it, it has its problems, the study group, but at least there are people that one could learn to care about in that way and, and, and actually get a fuller picture of what they are about rather than just small talk on a platform indeed yeah yeah i i i think i think there needs to be some level of um flexibility but i'm not certainly it, at the moment it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like a sensible way of doing things as you say you the first the first breakout group in the first session i was we were chatting to people and i thought oh, it's interesting and i said i hope i meet you again mm. and then you didn't you thought oh and then i was thinking oh well, right okay but you're right elfie it's it's the investment in energy that it takes to meet another group of people to find out about them you've got 20 minutes and you think oh blimey i've got to know these people to be able to engage with them and then also listen to them and say something it, and you think woof and something i haven't prepared you know i'm just gonna so it's all gonna be off the top of my head so yeah it's it's a to do it properly it takes a huge amount of effort and energy and it's not really surprising that it's a it's something we find difficult 
Whereas you're quite right if you if you know people over time. It's just that I, there is a the potential to be able to find more than just one group. Hmm. That would be nice. Um, but we had that over the, the seminar, the, over the, the two-year course, because you had a group of 20 people, plus you had your small group. So you have also, and that's what we don't get, hmm. because they're just, we haven't got the opportunity. So I'm not quite sure how to do it, but I, I would, but yeah, I think, Maybe if we t all together suggested, look, why don't we keep um, either our discussion group for the breakouts or at least keep the breakouts into the same grouping? That might have a slightly more impact than just one of us. Yeah. Even, even if only on the day, on the seminar day, it weren't two different groups, but you could meet yeah. back yeah. with the first group. That would be an uh, improvement, wouldn't it? for me? Yeah. So I didn't have to make contact with two new sets. That really does my head in. Um, and at least meeting them again. And now you talk about something slightly different, you know, the second chat. Or so, um, uh, but you you know them from the first one. Even that would be preferable, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's just a matter of you know, stabilizing groups, hmm. have, having stable groups rather than instable groups. Um, and, you know, I think that should be doable. That should be doable, uh, given with, with Zoom. Um, I'll, just, I'll have to ask. So uh, it, it may be they may be constrained by the, by, by the technology and the and, how they allocate groups that that could be a constraint mm, uh, but, yeah. but ho hopefully it it's not hopefully it can be done um but yeah I mean, i'd i think you know certainly have to suggest that that you know more stable groups are, are going to be more productive than random groups every you know half an hour or an hour or whatever it is so you know yeah, who knows? There could be a system where you could opt to either go back to that group or keep looking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I find somebody interesting to talk to. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And then they leave your group and say, oh, I didn't say the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a judgment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he wasn't impressed. <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> I don't think people would know. I mean, if you sort of said, "No, this, this group sucks. I want another one." <laughs> Fine, you know, just no one will know. <laughs> oh, it could be. Well, you, you could have a more sophisticated system. You could have an an, an, op, an option system where you gave very broad headings, and you said, you know, these." Are you more interested in Buddhist, traditional Buddhism? Are you more interested in secular Buddhism? Are you more interested in the Dharma without Buddhism? You know, you could then, you could then sort of select your, you could have, and then you would be in a group with people at least who would have a similar um, uh, interest. But, I'm not, but that might not, yeah. So, you, you know, you're starting from a, you, you haven't got so much work to do. Um, that would be, that would be a joy, I think. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, that looks, but what would be the headings? But yeah, for starters to have more, because we have quite a few Buddhist scholars, seemed like in in this attendee group, and then, or I mean, we I hear about them in the big questions, and there's often um, questions of minute little details of this or that stuff. Or, uh, so maybe they would opt for having those. They would like to maybe also meet the people who they could thrash that out with 
um, what the Pali word means exactly. Um, and and there might be another another more oriented to, towards the secular Dharma indeed, yeah. More but they are less less Buddhist. Yeah. Don't know. Could all be done. Hmm. Perhaps. It's a. Uh, it's interesting because in our group there is really uh, in our study group, Gary. There is there. There seems to be that divide a bit of more Buddhist-minded people mm -hmm. and more philosophically-minded people. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't in the last one, but what what Rupert observed is is interesting. That uh, what I had observed is that Sean made himself the chairperson. So he would say when we talk about what very often, very naturally, he would suddenly come in and say, uh, I think we should talk about da da da. And then often it is something very, it's doctrine stuff, Buddhist stuff, mm -hmm. rather than life stuff or, or philosophical things. So it's I I noticed that he were he has taken that over more and more maybe because he sets up the Zoom meeting I don't know or he, that's his his way of being in groups anyway he he just takes on that leader position um, so it's interesting that when he wasn't there in the beginning that Rupert noticed the difference of him being there and not being there. Yeah, I, I, it was interesting, and uh, it's 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 just it, but it's it, I it's not I I like the idea of somebody sort of opting to be a chair because it it sort of gives some structure, and I so I'm not, and I'm I'm quite happy to use whatever question if I if possible and and turn it into. To what I happen to be interested in, um, so long as I have an understanding of the other people and the confidence within the group, and that's what just, just takes a bit of time and, and is difficult to do because, as I say, we there aren't we've only got this format, only this uh, technology format. We don't know people, mm. so. But uh, yeah, anyway, how's your group, Gary? Your your um, study group. Um, well, you know, the, there's a new a new guy came in, uh, ah. another oh. guy from Thailand with uh, an, Amer an American in Thailand who I think is doing the Buddhist thing has a, a meditation business and things like that. So, yeah. Um, so yes, it, it's a very Buddhist orientated group. That's for sure. Right. Um, but though, you know, I'm not saying that they're not open, but you know, it's, that that is the orientation that's very strong. Do you find that frustrating, or you? Do you... Well, yes. It it just seems to be um you know just just the same old thing you know try, trying to sort of find substitute meanings for, for, for things the buddha said and trying to sort of uh, equivalize equivalentize sort of concepts and words and vocabularies and and you know i've, I've heard all that stuff before and uh it's just sort of unproductive as far as i'm concerned and maybe for them it's not, um, but I cannot see how it could be productive. I talk, we're talking like that, and trying to find equivalences from just from you know the, the Buddha's Dharma into into a contemporary language. Um, that yeah, it, it's just the, the framework is still strongly there. Uh, if if they try to find equivalences within you know, sciences or, or other philosophers or, or things like that. It's only to sort of uh, validate uh, the Buddhist frame. Yeah, uh, that that's 
that, that's an excellent summary of how I'm feeling about the course, really. <laughs> Not, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I sort of expected this to happen anyway, so I'm not... You know, but, you know, come come the second part, I mean, I think, you know, that, that, that's when, you know, things will have to get a little bit more serious. And uh, I, I seriously hope they can fix issues with, with groups because uh, it's just not going to be very... I mean, I mean I, my objective was to try and get some, some new ideas and to sort of get, you know, perhaps even perspectives on my ideas. Yeah, that, that's what I want to get out of it. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, I don't expect, I, mean, I'll, I'll ex, I expect to get that just, you know, from you know, Stephen's lectures a bit. But, you know, moving on, I think, um, you know, I, I'd expect a, a good deal more. Um, and, and hopefully by the second semester, you know, sufficient numbers of people will be wheeled out and, you know, perhaps a, a core of sort of true believers will remain. Uh, so. What about the forum? I mean, I I haven't written anything, um, but I'm sort of becoming more tempted. <laughs> uh, and I've read, I think, most of what people have said, and I haven't come across... Everybody's very polite, as they always are, on on, on this on our on a Buddhist one, I suppose. But um, I'm trying to think of anything controversial that I've read, and and I and I can't think of anything. Um, it it does seem to be turning things in in the today's world and turning them towards how they fit in with Buddhism rather than the other way around rather than I don't know I mean do you think that they're it, it's a, it seems very active the forum compared to the one we had on our course we, we are very few people said anything I mean, there's this stuff that pops in all the time, but maybe that's just because there's ten times the number of people. Well, yes, and and of course there's the initial flush of enthusiasm. Uh, myself, I, I'm not really following that at all. I'm sort of unsubscribed. But you know, if if you want to give me a reason to go there, yeah, please do. So. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, no. <laughs> that, I think at the moment, I, I just, I guess it's partly you know just by. A laziness to sort of read huge slabs of text. Yeah, I guess partly because uh, my eyes aren't all that good these days. But uh, it's more than that. It's just sort of just words, and uh, it's just I think people aren't really saying anything that I haven't heard before. Um, so uh, you know, just despite perhaps thinking that it is something new. And I guess, yeah, just it's just the, the manner of talking about things once again. Um, it's which you know I guess is to be expected for this um, part part of the course. But uh, you know, hopefully, this is sort of a, a bringing people up to speed part of the course. And so, I would hope that there'd be you know better discussion as things as uh, uh, with the, with the second semester. But for the moment, I'm just not getting involved, unless I, unless of course I, you want to do something to involve me, so or you want to lob a few grenades or you know whatever, I'll be in that. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, maybe I'm just not sure yet, though. I'm. Uh, it's a. Uh, what do you think, Elfie? You're, you know, the. Well, I, I mean, overview. I'm impressed that you say you read it pretty much all. I just um, haven't. Um, I have. Look, sometimes it comes up as a summary, and then there's just one article, um, uh, often by people who have already contributed. So there's a few major contributors on there, it yeah. seems to me. Um, and a bit like, so when I, I read single things that come into my inbox like that, 
and um yeah it also doesn't doesn't inspire me at the moment if you find something that's really interesting to let us know because i don't read it all and i would miss something good um or or just interesting and otherwise i feel a bit like gary that it's not really some something that uh, none of what i've read has has caught me in any oh that's an interesting new angle or so it's it's for me quite so far what i've read has been a bit pedestrian you know in a way of these ethics where we said let's all be a good person and i mean there's nothing wrong with that you know that is a, a high aspiration in life but it is intellectually not very stimulating in that way or to just say oh well let's do our best and and um um and uh, and the 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 buddhist dogmas roll off easily for people and i notice that i uh, still after all this time doing stephen's stuff and and mindful you know, when i first gotten into that uh checking out buddhism behind mindfulness i still don't have that language of uh, greed, confusion. I see. I, I, can't, I find it hard to think of the third one. That would be. I mean, that's shocking, truly. Greed, to every hatred, Buddhist. confusion. <laughs> greed. It's. It's. It, we use it constantly. Greed, hatred, confusion. Yeah. It's actually pretty. It's actually a pretty universal thing. <laughs> and I think that's something we can take from 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 uh, Gautama, and we'll. I think we can use that. <laughs> That really does summarize uh, uh, the worst of, of, of humanity. Uh, uh, I, 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 maybe, uh, maybe it can be summarized like that. But it's just, and as you see, it's not in my active vocabulary. I don't mm -hmm. argue like that. But uh, the, in the last study group that we were in, you know, it several times it came glibly off people's lips. And I might just say, wow, so this seems to inform how they are in the world, how they kind of judge themselves, uh, mm. you know, if they're on the right place and, on, or veering off and all that. And it's just mm. so not my world in a way. Not that I've if, if, if sat me down and say, can you see the value of it? Um, yeah, but it's not... It doesn't seem to be my guiding light like it uh, like it might be to others. It, it I don't argue to myself or others with that. It's it, and and there is um, yeah, I that might be so that it can be argued like that. But because of the nature of my work, I guess the it's just much too broad. It doesn't inform me. Mm. It does. It. Yeah. It's too. Yeah. So okay. That's that's some basic orientations of the human mind. So now mm. what? It it doesn't. It is so. So just universal that it it has no value to me in the way of how I deal with myself or others. Yeah. Mm. And, there, and yeah, I think <laughs> for me, they're words, and words are not how we live. Words are a, uh, something we put in the way to explain how we live. And the point is, it's much more the Heideggerian sense of being, and that's that's what we should be. If we and to try and talk about being. It's being in the world. It's how we are. This is what it is to be alive. And what it is to be alive is a lot more complicated than greed, hatred, and confusion. Uh, it, it's just not... Using that shorthand is is not... I don't think it's it's it's, it's helpful. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're... Yes, okay, that... that. There's just some, I mean, what on earth does confusion mean as well? I mean, you know, it's such a... I'm pretty sure I know what greed and hatred is, but confusion... I think delusion is... Delusion. 
yeah, yeah. it's probably better. Um, and you know, I could see all three of them. Yeah, things. yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but you know, it's not a question of well, how does how does this help me right now? You know, um, you know, how does this sort of form my my outlook and my, and my way of being? Um, it could inform it, uh, but you know, it's only one of many things, I guess. I mean, I, I look at a thing like you know, a greed, hatred, delusion as a little bit like an aphorism. It's a header under which right. there's a whole discussion that takes place, you know, yeah. uh, and you know, it's just not the aphorism. It's, it's the, you know, the, the diatribe, the discourse that, that goes around those words that, you know, that I've been exposed to and that I've, you know, partly memorized in some ways. And so, yeah, the, these little aphorisms are all very good, but uh, once you get married to them, I mean, it becomes a problem. Yeah, it is what's behind it. The, the point about an aphorism is that it, it is an articulation of an idea. And I'm, I'm like Elfie, and I'm not sure what the idea is it, within greed, hatred, delusion. Delusion on its own is, not, is enough. Um, yeah. You know, that. that. I mean, because you could encompass both greed and hatred in delusion. I mean, they are. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. if we yeah. it, it just you, it, in fact, just the word delusion is great. I mean, I I think that's very useful that's, because it summarizes lots of things. That's, mm. I like that. Yeah. 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 Because I, so is it delusion? Yeah, no, I'm not confused. Well, <laughs> Sorry. Greed yeah. and hatred. When they're used like that, they're very they're often very morally used and uh, don't lead to so much to understanding as to judgment of myself and others, which I find very counterproductive, you know? So, and a lot of, and I guess any religious thing, it, it comes with its right and wrongs. And that's just for me, old, old style, you know, which, which doesn't, it just leads to more and more Delusion, actually, more more confusion about uh, who one should be, who the others should be, and all that. So it's it's um, and and when it's when it starts with judgment, then the next thing might be that I um, have to get rid of it, indeed, uh, as if that were possible, and and then I'll be a good person, and then. Uh, my life will just pan out so much better than other people's lives. So it, 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 I think Stephen hinted to that, that it's often used therapeutically uh, only. And, uh, but it is even more insidiously used as a, as a, as a merit. You know, look, we have done all this work with the Buddhism and all we are the wiser now. And then the way that we will be able to conduct our life will be so much better. So we have sorted all these things out and then we will be very successful. Anyway, much more successful than other people. Because we have put all this work in and all the understanding in. So th this this suck the the stream from judgment to um therapeutics to merit is all too inviting for me and and i i really i i i do not uh, uh, i i do not agree with that is that at all i uh, yeah absolutely right absolutely and it, it makes me think now about what's the point in living ethically if it's only going to refer to people who happen to be interested in Buddhism. I mean, uh, there, there was a, one thing that he said last week, he used as an example, was... You know, living ethically and presumably following this sort of Buddhist ethic was that he, as a married man in positions where there were young, attractive women, he would 
see the reactivity of that and and let it fade away rather than engage with it. And I was thinking, isn't that what married men do? I mean, it's like, that's got nothing to do with anything Buddhist. It's just what you have decided. You've, you've sort of said, well, if I'm going to get married, then that's what I'm going to do. That's how I'm going to be. I'm not going to allow these other things to affect me. And I thought, what, why... Why use that as an example? Because it just seemed to be, well, that's just what you do. And and it's nothing to do with, nothing to do with Buddhism. It's nothing to do with secular Buddhism. If I'm not even sure it's anything to do with ethics. It's just that's the way of being. That's just something that you would do. So to sort of use it as an example of, because I'm a Buddhist, I would act this way. Seem seem to me completely the wrong way around. Well, it, it does, I guess, acknowledge the the role of social mores um, within whatever uh, environment you happen to be living in. Um, I mean, is there a, a Buddhist way of being married, as opposed to? A Christian way of being married that, that they look pretty much the same to me, really. Uh, just... so it, it, but you know, it may differ in other countries. Certainly in Indonesia, it would differ. Um, but you know, yeah. I, I couldn't quite work out what the point of using or how that was at all relevant. Mm. It's that's what I, I just thought. What? What's? Because yeah, I mean, if we're talking about, I don't know. If, if we're talking about ethics, what's the point in talking about ethics? Are you trying to say that we're trying to make the world more ethical? Well, I guess this is the, 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 the ethics of, of fidelity, perhaps. I, I mean, I don't know that, you know, Buddhism has anything about that specifically, but, but there is a sort of a, a, you know, a social contracts or social understandings in most cultures uh, to do with the, what is good and what is not. And marital fidelity is, is uh, in most cultures, counted as something good. Yeah, absolutely. I just couldn't work out what, it was, what it had to do with secular Buddhism and why it was being used as an example, why he was specifically using that. I mean, it couldn't... But, all, but my broader question is, what's the point in... Um, a course about ethics and if it's gone next the next one will be the ethics of uncertainty what's the point in doing it presumably it's we're not doing it just as an academic study we're doing it because it's thought to be a good idea <laughs> that people act ethically. In which case, you should be thinking about how could does this affect the world and people in the world. So that would be all to do with all the things that we've been talking about for the last year. I mean, how, how do you spread ideas? How do you help people engage with new ideas? How do you help people see the position that they're in at the moment? But none of that seems to be, maybe it's going to come later, but none of that seems to be part of the conversation. The conversation seems to be just about this is a secular Buddhist ethic. So if you're a secular Buddhist, but if you're a secular Buddhist, you're going to be a nice person, aren't you? I mean, flipping heck, you're not going to, it's, a, it's sort of, Actually, I've just been watching a Netflix uh, series uh, called Samurai or something, and it's about the um, 14th, 15th, 16th century, 15th, 16th century Japan and um, the, the rise of a, a particular warlord who took over the entirety of Japan. And one of the things that he did was to um, target Buddhists and the Buddhists raised a Buddhist army and they were uh, 
they were real fighters. And <laughs> you were just thinking, and the, and the historians were saying, you've got to forget about Buddhists being monks. These were soldiers. These were Buddhist soldiers. And there was a Buddhist army, and their job was to kill other people. And and they were and they were Buddha, and you would think, ah, right, well that's okay. That's that's a different type of Buddhist that I've that I'm so anyway. But it was nowadays, I guess, we think Buddhists are generally good and they are nice. So they really don't need teaching about ethics. Well, it's I I, I just realized it. It struck that example struck me as completely odd too. I, I don't know. I didn't know what to do with that. I said, that is such an odd thing to bring up as an example. That is, am I supposed to be impressed by that or what? Or, um, uh, but it's also, there, there you have it actually from him, that totally pedestrian. You know, even what we discussed in our study group the week before is more ethical and more interesting than this internal stance, if I ogle another uh, young woman or not, uh, because I'm married, you know, and where does the ethics kick in, you know, do I secretly ogle or and, and then let it pass? Or do I avert my eyes or, you know, there's, there's Christian stuff coming in, you know, do I not even look or do I just not act, you know, or, you know, do I have that wonderful conversation, but not let it get any further? I mean, to, <laughs> it struck me as really, really odd. But what we said in the study group, I think you bought, you made a contribution there too, how you sit around a dinner table and someone makes a racist remark. You know, do you speak up or not? Do you spoil the good, uh, the bonhomie by taking on that thing and say, hey, that's not on. Uh, even that is a more interesting ethical question than in, in my sweet own self, how much do I look you know, uh, how much do I fantasize? Um, you know, isn't ethics about indeed being in the world, you know, action rather than my own sweet fantasies inside myself? I don't, I, and you know, what is it then? Oh, I find it that awful, right? <laughs> 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 but you you know you must not desire someone else's wife there you have it you never win because you had the thought you know there's all this oh this gets a bit sticky i don't know <laughs> i think that there is a there is a point and that is the reactivity point the 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 both situations are about reactivity about how the the recognition of of something the recognition of something arising and then seeing that as this is life this is these things happen in life and how do you respond when these things happen and it's the useful thing for me is or one of the useful things is that it is responding and i can see it's responding and this is how things respond in life and like 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 for both, well, for all of us, it's, you know, yeah, well, that's interesting. And it's also interesting to know the science of why that's happening. And what is it that makes it happen in, in the brain? And what is the brain indeed? And what is me? Those are the interesting things. And those are the things which are about the, ex and the experience of being is, is an extraordinarily interesting thing perhaps the most interesting thing and 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 yet and relating that to an ethical life yeah that is interesting and, and you know so so that i can see them bringing being brought in but it seems to me that that to make that the central point make the ethics the central point is is missing the point it's a sort of like well yeah that's part of it but it's not the central part. The central part is the nature of existence and, and all of the things that are related to that. That's what's interesting for me, anyway. And increasingly so. Yeah. Yeah.
Anyway, I'm, I've got a bit of a bad back because I've been doing too much stuff in the garden and it, sitting here for an, an hour or Secretly so. Secretly felling trees oh, in the middle <laughs> of the night. <laughs> yeah, <No>. indeed. <laughs> He's poisoning trees in the night. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm going to have to go and adjust my position and, mm. and lie down, I think, or something. Because oh. uh, uh, yeah, I'm struggling yeah, a bit here. Comfortable. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, may go better. Try and catch up with you next week. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, if I'm still here, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you could probably zoom from prison. There'll be no problem. Take your phone. <laughs> um, that could be an issue. Yeah, that could be an issue. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, you look after yourself, Gary. And, yeah, yep. try, try, and, try and stay on the right side of whatever laws you think are appropriate to stay on the right side of. I'll try my best. It's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe it's time for that journey to back to Australia. Uh, well, yeah, I've been yeah. more Amsterdam or England. Ah, ah right. Let's well, look, look it's very cold England. here. Be well, make sure you got your woolly hat. <laughs> oh yes, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll buy one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At the moment, there are the, the options. Um, um, oh, there could be others, but yeah, Australia's. Uh, not an attractive option for various oh. reasons. The statute of limitations, that sort of thing. You know? uh, <laughs> anyway, okay. Well, I'll okay. See you. Well, lovely to see you as always. Definitely see you next week. Then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, take care. Bye bye. 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 bye.